This is the second day and or night that I've seen the whole earth darken. Mm, very dim, dim, dim reflection of a little bit of, if you can say, a lighter, dark shade of the globe. It's as if the sun has just been blocked out, you know. Wow. And the planet is just dark. And you can barely make out, you know, one side of the earth from the other. And the little bit of sun light that's, you know, getting through all the, the thickness of whatever this is. But not only do I feel completely dwarfed by when it, when I when it comes down to a close up, completely dwarfed by the size of this earth. But to see another planet almost behind the earth coming around, mm -hmm. you know, to the the western side, if you want to call it, you know, sun comes up in the east, sets in the west. But there's a constant, you know, there's this dark planet behind our our earth mm -hmm. that's coming around, and at the same time, there's almost always some type of a when I could see it clearly, it was a fireball. Wow. Now things are so sooted out and blacked out and ashed out that you can you can hardly see the thing, but it's still there. And, and it's, it's a dark planet. Well, the dark planet's behind the Earth, and the fireball thing is like, you know, maybe it's Nibu, Nib Nibiru. 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 Is maybe, you know, the, the planet behind the earth that's maybe <laughs> the planet that's coming in behind the earth. And this just showed up, right? Out of nowhere. Well, yesterday, but it's been there ever since. It's, you know, see the earth. The earth it's is. A worm. I think it's a wormhole. It, the earth is darkened. There's a dark planet that's smaller behind it's a planet wow behind the earth that's coming around in in like an elliptical orbit and and really close paths i can see how that would affect gravitational pull poles and all kinds of things but off to the right is still it reminds me of just a go ahead Reminds you what? It reminds me of in the seventies when they show uh, the Apollo missions and their re-entry in the capsule, the pod that they were in. You know when it came back in. Came back in. It, it was just like the the shields and the plates had to be so engineered and so thick to withstand that kind of friction and burning right. till the thing, you know, would touch down or splash into the ocean, you know? And in ships and helicopters and everyone would come in and, you know, Rescue. take the astronauts out and whatever. Wow. That's what it reminds me of is the the reentry of the you know capsule that they were in uh, coming back into the atmosphere. So I can still see. Go ahead, honey, I'm with you. Totally. I can still see vaguely even the burning light or anything. There's so much ash and so much dust and so okay. much everything is in the atmosphere. So much. Mm -hmm between what is still heading straight on, head on toward the earth. You know, this, this call it a chunk or a piece or a layer or a plate off a meteor or what. Right. It's coming in 
so hard and so fast that, you know, that others have said. So it is a meteor you're seeing. It's part of a meteor. It's as if you'd taken an onion and cut it in two places and just peeled a quarter of the layer back. Okay. And it's that quarter that's peeled back. It's that splice, or that, that not a splice, but a, a piece layer. of the, a layer of that meteor. If this is what it is. That is, you know, the thing keeps doing what it's doing, but man, this slab that's come off of this thing is enormous. Our Earth, which is darkened now, substantially. And this other thing coming in, this big layer that has torn off of the, the main body of whether it's an asteroid or who knows what, Meteor asteroid. That's why Go ahead. in previous rolling ongoing visions throughout the day and night, and I'm telling you, I you know, I'm blind. Right. I can't see. But I still remember how to turn my head and look in different directions in right. any direction I more in the spirit than in any direction I look, whether my eyes are open or closed, this thing's in motion. I mean, it's it's imminent. Wow. It's imminent. I Are mean, it's headed towards us. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. It's in real time. But whether it's in real time or not, I mean, you know. People that tend to see things or feel or sense or whatever, you know, kind of get it raw, you know, like it's right there in front of you. I am not setting dates, and I don't pretend to presume to put any kind of timing on this, except for the fact that I do agree with, uh, with Mike. Um... Uh, so many things are happening so much faster than scientists and researchers and people thought. Right. It's ramping. So when the Lord tells it's you... ramping up. When the Lord tells you, you know, we're heading into a hornet's nest here. This is a formidable enemy. It's going to be hard, but I will give you new strength Every day, for right. whatever the day holds. Right. And a lot of us are going to have to crawl out of our rabbit hole <laughs> and our, you know, our little dens that we've made for ourselves. Get off the dumb internet constantly. Stay out of the stores and malls and stop, drop, and pray. Now, I, I know you've heard so many things like that. The buttons go flat, you guys. I understand that. Uh, and while I'm talking to you now, you know, this piece off of this meteor or whatever, is, you know, it hits patches where it's a, a little brighter and it's more, you know, I can see it more clearly. But these things are in motion. I mean, the Earth is rotating. I don't know why, when, where, or how, but it seems to be rotating in a kind of a southwesterly or southeasterly, rather, northwesterly kind of a turn. These things are, are headed toward, you know, a deep impact at some point, and this dark, megalithic planet. That's just about a size smaller than the Earth. If you could put a put a nickel on top of a quarter or a okay. coin within a coin, right? You know, this this dark planet, whatever it is, is almost you know it's not 
I'd say at the very least, like about a quarter smaller than the Earth. Okay. If it grew any bigger, they'd be almost like the same size. So those are those are two fronts that keep coming up. Wow. And the sinkholes and the some place some place it's close to the Great Lakes. And in the spring, summer, and fall you can see they're they're just it's just patches of water everywhere. The boundary mm. waters you know, going on up in Canada. Yeah. But it's as if the boundary waters have come down and completely, I mean, there's just so much water. It's got to go someplace. Right. The glaciers are melting and, and all kinds of, I'm sure there are other factors. Sure. But at least on two continents and in three different countries, I continue to see these, these massive sinkholes that are either sucking Ooh. everything down into them or they're belching out this superheated steam, vapor, water, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. It's almost like there's a boiling ocean underneath. If you could peel the That's the pretty layers. accurate for what Mike from Around the World said about New York. If you could, like, like peeling an orange, as you're, if you could peel the surface back on the earth, mm -hmm. that down under there, some layer at some point, it's almost like there's a vast reserve in the ocean. You know, the waters of the deep, maybe going back to Genesis or whatever, you know, and and the flood and Noah, mm -hmm. not just the rain and the and the heavens opening up, but the waters of the deep opening up. So mm -hmm. you got water coming in from these massive weather changes and whatever from the atmosphere, and the Earth's own core, you know, opening up and, and spewing out or taking in what it does. Hmm. That's that's pretty much it for now. The continents look so different, hmm. so very different. Hmm. It's like looking at a hand with all the fingers, and then looking at just the palm as if all the fingers had been cut off the hand. Wow. And yet, even in that, there are places all over the earth that God has set in safety that are surviving. They might be mountain peaks here or there, even though many mountain ranges have, have fallen and many valleys have raised up new mountain ranges. Uh, it's just the way it works when the plates hit each other. Um, wow. I had to prove the continental drift theory when I was in college and uh, you know you at that time you could just about kind of put it together like a puzzle so the only thing that was there was a, you know a large landmass called Pangaea and something else but you know then the plates came together pushed up and pushed these land masses apart mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's a continent rising in the middle of the Atlantic. Well, it's called the continental drift theory. Yeah, but there's something else going my, on there now. There's my, a whole continent beginning to rise up. My point is, every mountain will be laid low and every valley mm -hmm. lifted up. 